Here we go. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Miss Magic, Season 5, Episode 11. Party pooped. Okay. I really like the latter half of this episode. Basically anything with Pinkie Pie by herself, especially the journey of hers, was great. But everything with the yaks pretty much like, oh... Just wrong on so many levels. Okay, so we're introducing a new race and a new kingdom. So we're actually establishing something outside the bounds of Equestria. But they basically act like a bunch of bullies or spoiled children. If they don't get their way, they go around and start wrecking stuff. How on earth is this possibly okay? Yeah, I know there's supposed to be a different culture and everything, but this kind of ruined it for me. <laughs> different culture would be awesome. Different culture acting violent and causing property damage? Not so much. Why do you want to befriend someone who keeps wrecking your stuff? That's an abusive relationship. And just out of curiosity, have they ever established what exactly a moon is? Are we talking about a lunar cycle? Are we talking about the lunar calendar? Are we talking about 28 days? What? Are we talking about a year? Well, we don't know for sure if the equestrian lunar cycle is the same as Earth's lunar cycle, so it could be longer or shorter than 28 days. Or it could just be, you know, a Yak Yakistan saying, you know, like, best friends forever. Either that or we get to the end of a thousand moons and I want to see what happens. Now, and I can see, okay, stall until Pinkie Pie gets back, and the different things they tried to stall with were interesting. and done in a different way could have still made a good point because they were trying to make everything like Yak Yakistan and it wasn't quite right. So the Yaks could have still been offended without going on a rampage and destroying property and putting Spike and Fluttershy's critters at physical risk. Yeah, I just really didn't like the way they took the Yaks. I know it's supposed to be a joke, but I found none of it funny. I wasn't really offended or anything. I just didn't find it funny because it was like physical comedy without the important part of physical comedy. You know, the part that makes you laugh. No, and it just screams a very bad lesson. Try to make friends with people who wreck your stuff and throw hissy fits if they don't get their way. Yeah, to me the lesson wasn't really clear. Was it was it a lesson for Pinkie Pie? Was it a lesson for the Yaks? Was it a lesson for Twilight? I know they usually try to fit multiple lessons in episodes now, but none of them were clear at all to me. Well, the clearest one that I think was intentional was that you need to make other people feel welcome. Just because where they're going to is different doesn't mean it can't be welcoming. But that was pretty weak. Yeah, but I really liked all the parts with Pinkie Pie by herself going on her grand adventure, all the little things in there, the references to the Beatles, and seeing Cherry Jubilee back is a nice little touch. Yes, and back to world building. I'll go on a separate rampage about the Beatles later. <laughs> <laughs> So, apparently, all of that stuff is in a straight line, more or less, looking at how um, Pinky backwards sledded her way all the way back to Ponyville. It was nice to see Cherry Jubilee again. Them all falling asleep was kind of funny, but also a little silly. If Pinkie Pie's the most rested, why didn't she change out with one of the ponies in harness? You know, she's more energetic. I don't think it would have made much of a difference with the rest of the team falling asleep. <laughs> Well, she could have pulled more to the side more easily if she had been in one of the lead harness positions. But nice to know that, at least in the north, Equestria ends with the Crystal Empire. But I'm sorry, Cadence can fly. And she's an alicorn. She couldn't have used the magic to wink Pinky up to the top or, I don't know, flown her up there real quick. I mean, you're Princess Cadence and you took the time to escort some pony to the edge of the kingdom and just instead of just sending a guard with her. Well, I think the whole thing was to make a joke about Pinky going on this grand adventure that apparently took only an afternoon. <laughs> Which is pretty impressive and, you know, her monologuing was kind of interesting. Of course, Beatles reference, awesome, especially considering that they put Pinky in all the right places for every single picture. They didn't mix up which Beatles she was. In every shot, she was Ringo. 
Uh, I think whenever she said, you know what I mean, I think they were actually referencing Ernest as well. <laughs> Which makes sense because Ernest was always a crazy nice person who ended up doing stuff for the right reasons, but ended up messing it up along the way, but still got things done. Mm-hmm. But I have to go back to the Beatles real quick. If I have all of my theology correct, and I've been, I haven't laid hands on much of my Beatles stuff lately, so if I recall correctly, Ringo was the last one to join the group. He replaced Pete Best. So joining an established group, putting her on the drums, so they had the image for uh, when they appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show. So obviously on drums then. And they did the Abbey Road album cover. And they had Pinky in the second position, which was Ringo's position, which would be a little creepy for those who f used to follow the Paul is dead theory because the theory was Ringo was the mourner because he was in all black and Pinky's kind of a little bouncy to be a mourner. <laughs> but she was also wearing the correct color outfit and in the correct place in the lineup for the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band picture. And I wonder if they picked Ringo for her so that she could be in the pink outfit since Ringo had the pink outfit for Sgt. Pepper's. And they also kind of cheated a little bit on that photo. There were a lot more people in that album cover than what they had for the still. Um, but it was a nice touch that they had, looked like some sort of emblem for the band name in the flowers because on the actual cover you had, it said the Beatles and then you had a ton of flowers in a nice pattern. I'm moving on to uh, Pinky's secret room. That was fun, though Twilight being afraid of quesadillas because they're so cheesy does that just mean the quesadillas are too cheesy or that she's actually afraid of cheese? And if she's actually afraid of cheese, how did she get along so well with cheese sandwich? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was just some weird kind of random thing. And apparently there was a quesadilla or something in there because right after she says that, she looks down and then she starts backing away from something. No, she said it's just because they're so cheesy and she shudders and backs away. So I don't know if there was actually a quesadilla or if that was entirely based on the recollection of the quesadilla. But I like also later when Pinkie Pie comes back from her sledding adventure, I like how she ends up carrying her friends and goes down there. And mostly the end of it where she just sits down the sled and slides back up and Fluttershy goes, so um, do we just walk back up the slide or what? <laughs> yeah. And then one thing they glossed over is Pinkie Pie actually succeeded in her mission. The sled was exactly the type of thing she went to get, something that was authentic for Yak Yakistan. Can't get much more authentic than a sled that a young yak was actually using. Nice job accidentally stealing a sled, Pinky. <laughs> I think she ended up returning it later. I'm sure she did, or she sent it back with the prince and his entourage. Also, apparently Pinkie Pie's like the NSA or something, because she has files on everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tiny bit scary. Detailed information on everyone, at least on what parties they like and what stuff they like and don't like. Uh, she could also be considered Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> she knows when you're sleeping, she knows when you are awake. <laughs> I love how Twilight apparently almost caused a war. Instead of just a major diplomatic incident. Though, based on what we've seen of these yaks, I can see why ponies basically said, nope, we're not doing anything with you anymore. And I'm betting they were also mostly dealing with unicorns at the time, of the Canelot variety. Oh, as in the uh, stuck-up ones that Rarity was dealing with? Mm-hmm. So I can see why both sides got heavily offended <laughs> and said, borders are now closed. Though that once again brings up how long is a moon? And is a hundred moons or hundreds of moons long enough? <laughs> well, we may or may not find out. I love Celestia's reaction too. Is like, look on her face like, you almost caused a war? <laughs> thought you were the princess of friendship. It was a very simple misunderstanding. We thought we were doing things correctly, but they weren't good enough, so we needed to change tactics. Though Spike playing the piano was funny. I know he played for Pinkie Pie in that other diplomatic incident episode between the ponies and the buffalo. But I seem to recall he also played for, is it Baby Lickety Split? In the second MLP Gen 1 movie. Well, how about our final thoughts? At least it wasn't Princess Spike again. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the episode. Mostly the end of the episode where it was just Pinkie Pie and her antics. But anything with the yaks were just sigh-worthy. <laughs> ah, well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 11, Party Pooped.
Thanks for listening. If you want to see more of my art, you can find it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. If you really like our podcast, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below. Please keep them nice. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description.